This past week's short videos have all been based around the Robbie the Robot inspired Fallout Automatron, the Protectron. What was once Robco's most accessible all-in-one bot has become a common foe throughout the various wastelands. But despite these awkward machines being the most common robotic enemy, there are quite a few Protectrons that are anything but common. Welcome to the weird world of robotics. Today we're going to explore every notable Protectron throughout the Fallout series. Fallout 3, Button Gwinnett. First up on the list is the Protectron designated BGWIN 0009 Button Gwinnett and was named after the Founding Father. Located in the National Archives, the Button Gwinnett unit performed three primary functions. One, to provide guided tours to any visitors. Two, participate in a reenactment of the signing of the Declaration of Independence along with six other Protectron units. And three, provide additional support to the security staff. However, the bot was also prone to system memory malfunctions. This led to Button being deactivated for a time pre-war for maintenance, before being brought back online. However, since the drop of the bombs, Button has only been getting worse. By 2277, Button the robot believes that he's the real Button Gwinnett. He spends his days as of late guarding the Declaration of Independence and fortifying the National Archives to ward off any would-be ne'er-do-wells. Dean Dewey Found in a Protectron pod at the Roosevelt Academy, Dean Dewey is now the acting principal and head disciplinarian of the prestigious high school. Although deactivated by the time the Lone Wanderer finds him, Dewey can be reactivated by using the Headmaster's terminal. Upon reactivation, the Robodean will roam the halls, ensuring that any students in the halls have a hall pass. Those unlucky souls caught without a hall pass will experience the robot's wrath. A total of 10 demerit points will be given to the delinquent. Deputy Weld Deputy Weld can be found greeting all those who venture to the scrap town known as Megaton. Now posted outside the settlement's gates, Weld was once owned by Tinker Joe before Sheriff Lucas Sims bought the Protectron to act as the town's greeter and first line of defense. Though the bot has equal hit points to that of a standard Protectron, if Broken Steel is installed, Deputy Weld does respawn. So no matter how many times you knock the bucket of bolts down, Weld keeps getting back up. Even if you blow up Megaton, that won't quite kill Weld, as his faceplate survives the blast, his garbled voice still welcoming travelers. Shakes Shakes is the Federalist Lounge's 24-7 barkeep in Tenpenny Tower. Not much of a talker, serving drinks is all Shakes has ever known, specifically being commissioned by Alistar Tenpenny to serve drinks to the residents of the tower. The Lone Wanderer can hack Shakes' control terminal to make it so that Shakes either offers the Lone Wanderer the 10% holiday discount, or the 50% VIP discount. Doing either will change some of Shakes' dialogue, either greeting you with a robotic happy holidays or addressing you as either sir or ma'am. Thomas Jefferson The last is the TJEFF002 Thomas Jefferson unit. Programmed with a similar function to that of the Button Gwinnett unit, Thomas Jefferson would participate in the signing of the Declaration of Independence reenactment, assisting with guided tours, and also perform some standard security duties. As of 2277, the bot is sealed in a Protectron pod in the archival strongroom of the National Archives. As cool as it would be to have a robotic Thomas Jefferson roaming about, a National Archives employee pulled a prank before the war, swapping the bot's voice software with a radio uplink and frequency software. As such, the Lone Wanderer is able to turn Thomas Jefferson into a walking radio, broadcasting Galaxy News Radio. Fallout New Vegas Boar Boar is the first notable Fallout New Vegas Protectron, and funnily enough, he doesn't actually appear in Fallout New Vegas. Cut from the game's content, Boar was meant to assist Keeley with her research at Vault 22. Named after Niles Boar, the bot would have been found computing protein sequences and waiting for its master to return from the lower levels of the deadly plant-infested vault. Fisto Fully Integrated Security Technotronic Officer is a unique Protectron found in Cerulean Robotics. During the side quest Wang Dang Atomic Tango, James Garrett asked the courier to find him a suitable sex bot for the Atomic Wrangler. Fisto is that bot. Although not initially programmed to be a bot of the night, the courier with high enough science, or Ralph from Mick and Ralph's, can write a sex bot programming routine for the unassuming Protectron. Now, devoted to the pleasure of its clients, Fisto charges 10 caps per hour to any who assume the position. Prim Slim Prim Slim was commissioned by the owner of the Vicky and Vance Casino to act as its official spokespot. As such, the Protectron is extremely knowledgeable about the petty crooks that the casino is named after, the town of Prim, 
and speaks negatively of the casino's only nearby competitors, the Bison Steve Hotel. However, being active for over two centuries took a toll on the hardy cowpoke, as when he is confronted about the missing Vicky and Vance memorabilia, he claims that he can still see Vance's submachine gun with his three photo sensors. But these faults can also be put to good use when the town of Prim falls under unlawfulness. After a group of escaped conflicts take over the town, eliminate Sheriff McBain and his wife, and kidnap Deputy Beagle, the courier goes on to restore order to the post-nuclear resort town. In doing so, as Deputy Beagle is only a deputy and not a sheriff, Prim Slim is the easiest, and frankly funniest, candidate for the job. And my favorite part of promoting Prim Slim is that Deputy Beagle hates having a sheriff robot. Like, bruh, if you didn't want a sheriff robot, why didn't you take the promotion? Protectobot The Protectobot was a pre-war prototype developed by Robco. Intended to be a new and improved Protectron, the Protectobot would replace the Protectron's two legs with a set of three wheels. Described as a robot moving so fast it looks like it's standing still, the bot would never meet the required safety standards outlined by Robco's team of lawyers. Vendertron Vendertron is the Gunrunner's Protectron salesman manning the kiosk outside of Freeside. Vendertron is unable to leave the kiosk as the structure was actually built around the bot to deter theft and vandalism. Vendertron is quite the mouthful, isn't it? Well, that's what the Gunrunners thought too, as a Gunrunner's terminal entry mentions discussing a name change perhaps to Bob. The Custodian The Custodian is the first notable DLC Protectron being found in the big empty West Tunnel, and that's all that's really to the Custodian. Outside of the name, there's not much else to the blue bot. It shares similar stats to that of a Protectron Mark VI, and doesn't have any unique dialogue, just a unique name. And judging by the state of the West Tunnel, it wasn't very good at its job. Construction Drone Foreman and lastly for New Vegas is the Construction Drone Foreman. Like the Custodian, the Foreman is only found in the Old World Blues DLC. And again, similar to the Custodian, there's not much else to the Foreman. He's just the Foreman robot to the Construction Protectrons at the Big Empty's construction site. Fallout 4, Buddy. Buddy is the first notable Protectron from Fallout 4. Buddy, or Drinkin' Buddy, is a unique Protectron found in the basement of the Shamrock Tap House. You see, before the Great War, the owner of the Shamrock Tap House, Patrick Merriweather, started a little side project using an old Protectron of his. What he did was he stripped out the Protectron's main assembly and replaced it with a custom mini micro brewing unit that he made himself. The bot was now able to accept holodisc recipes and produce an ice cold bevy at an amazingly fast rate. Once Patrick had the working prototype, he made contact with the owner of the Hotel Rexford who was interested in investing into his project. But as he was planning on renting a truck to deliver Buddy, the Great War happened, leaving Buddy inactive in his pod 210 years later. The sole survivor is able to boot up Buddy and either keep him for a settlement of his own, or deliver Drinkin' Buddy to the Hotel Rexford, as was intended centuries earlier. First Mate What was once a law enforcement protectron during the Great War, took on a new role after the bombs dropped. Now aboard the USS Constitution, the first mate leads the other Protectrons and turrets aboard the ship. Despite being in a leadership position, he's a bad role model as he's actually the only bot aboard that doesn't speak in an old English accent. Rockobot Featured on a cover of Tesla Science Magazine, Rockobot is the hottest Protectron musician with over 10 number one hits, including Carburetor Heartbreak. This rocking bot has its faceplate styled in a way that mimics a pompadour hairstyle, and its chest piece resembles a collared jacket. Remember to keep it rockin' in the nuked world. Takahashi Takahashi is the robot owner of the Diamond City's central noodle stand, Power Noodles. The unique Protectron is a bot of few words, only being able to ask what would you like to have in Japanese. Despite this sort of open-ended question, he only understands the phrase yes as a proper response, and he only sells noodle cups. What would you like to have? Yes. McDonough and nearly every companion believe that Takahashi is broken, but the Diamond City Mayor refuses to have him repaired, believing that he's become a symbol of Diamond City culture. And while I'm not very fond of McDonough myself, I have to agree with him here. Diamond City wouldn't be the same without its robotic Japanese noodle vendor. Tin Man Tin Man is the result of one ambitious man's attempt at creating a race-winning robot. Tin Man is a deactivated protectron that can be found at Easy City Downs. A man named Tony converted an old Protectron into a racing bot, believing that it could easily win at the local racetrack. I'd guess Tony was really just stupid, as Protectrons are notoriously slow. 
Tourbot. It's bots like these and the foreman that make me question their inclusion on this list, but since the Tourbot is still unique, I figure that's good enough to qualify as a notable Protectron. Tourbot can be found in Boston Common, near Park Street Station. Tourbot's location marks the spot for the start of the Freedom Trail, and the bot itself provides some additional information regarding the trail. Other than that, there's not too much else of note for Tourbot. Sheriff Eagle and Sheriff Hawk The Dry Rock Gulch section of Nuka World is home to quite a few Western-themed Protectrons. Sheriff Eagle and Sheriff Hawk are two guides at Dry Rock Gulch. They help visitors navigate the park and such. They guide visitors to complete a set of three tasks in order to obtain a safe combination to enter Mad Mulligan's Minecart Coaster. It's kinda cool. To ride the ride, you've gotta do some fun games in the park. Actually good park interaction. Doc Phosphate Doc Phosphate is the owner of the saloon in Dry Rock Gulch. Phosphate has been operating his own saloon, serving up Nuka-Cola Wild since before the Great War. Phosphate also manages one of the tasks assigned by the sheriffs. To get his piece of the safe combination, one must deliver some ice cold wilds to three patrons. The Giddy Up Kid. We'll just get all the Dry Rock Protectrons out of the way. The Giddy Up Kid is a Protectron rancher found just south of Doc Phosphate's saloon. He requests the aid of the sole survivor to corral his herd of Giddy Up Buttercups. In doing so, the sole survivor will receive the second piece of the safe combination. One Eyed Ike. One Eyed Ike holds the third and final piece of the safe combination. To get it, however, you must challenge and win a duel against the robotic lawman. Nira. Nuka World Informational Robot Assistant, or Nira, is a modified Protectron programmed to act as a greeter and tour guide for Nuka World. While Nira promotes the Park Medallion Collection Challenge, she has also been described as extremely creepy. Prior to the Great War, employees noted that she could be found banging on the doors to the Nuka World power plant multiple times. Now, since the Raiders have taken over, they have given Nira a personality upgrade. This upgrade sometimes causes her to snap at park visitors and threaten to kill them. You know, like normal greeters. Ticket Taker The Ticket Taker is another one of the lesser notable Protectrons. They're found outside the Grandchester Mystery Mansion and are actually the ones who control access to the attraction. One must either buy a ticket from them to gain entry or pick up one off the ground nearby. I should also note, and this is a bit weird, but for some reason the ticket taker carries 100 paddle ball strings on them as well. I'm not sure why. Hertz. Hertz, the only notable Protectron from Fallout 4's Automatron DLC, was a member of Jackson's roaming robotic caravan. Hertz, like many of his other robotic caravan members, was named after a famous scientist. In Hertz's case, he was named after Heinrich Hertz. Hertz, along with much of his caravan companions, met their demise at a robotic battle near Watts Consumer Electronics. Fallout 76 Fallout 76 Protectrons are a bit interesting because, due to the game's design decisions at launch, many Protectrons are simply vendors, so some of these might be a bit quick. I'll try to get all the vendors out of the way early. Antoine is the head chef of Le Grand Gourmet after the human workers were replaced by robots at the White Spring Resort. The Brotherhood vendor operates the Creekside Lodge at the White Spring Resort alongside the other faction vendors. These include the Free States vendor at the White Spring Spa, the Raiders vendor at the Black Powder Shop, the Responders vendor at the Newsstand, and the Shopping Mall vendor at the Orem. Cap'n Kid, or just Cap'n, is a vendor working at Captain Kids in the White Spring Resort. The store mainly sells toys, junk, and clothes. Doc Stanley operates the Chemist's store in the White Spring Resort. Pendleton sells camp plans at Studio 58 store in the White Spring Resort. Tweed sells formal wear at the Bespoke store in the White Spring Resort. Tannin sells spirits at the Lobby Bar in the White Spring Resort. The Sunnies. The settlers set up a home base called Foundation on the site of a pre-war tourist attraction of Spruce Knob. Spruce Knob was the highest peak in West Virginia, and now it's a base for those who return to the region after the Scorched Plague was dealt with. Set up along with them is Simple Utility Pneumatic Networked, um, something. Or Sunny. Sunny was a former responder protectron turned vendor for the Settlers faction. Two other Sunnies also operate shops in Foundation, each claiming the other two to be imposters and insisting that they are the real Sunny. The Sunnies operate Sunny's General Goods, Sunny's Killing Supplies, and Sunny's Kitchen. I think based on the names you can guess what they sell. Open World Vendors. Okay, so littered throughout the game are these extremely generic Protectrons that act as open world vendors. Many of these were set up by the various post-war factions as a way to automate their trading. Yes, it is extremely ironic that pre-war Appalachia was protesting automation, but then post-war Appalachia makes use of it quite a bit. 
These bots sell miscellaneous aid, ammo, apparel, weapons, junk, and plans. I'm going to quickly go over the names and where to find them. Bob is at the responders camp in Flatwoods. He mentions that he's authorized to purchase your excess supplies for the greater good. Chad operates the responders trading post at Camden Park. He mentions that he only trades with humans because the other robots in the park are crazy. Greg works at the responders outpost in Grafton. He notes that he saw the Vault 76 overseer chatting with Grafton's mayor. Mac is at the Charleston Fire Department training facility. He notes that it's nice to see more people coming to Charleston and that the city has seen a lot. Phoenix is at the Watoga Shopping Plaza Super Duper Mart. He's a member of the Brotherhood of Steel. Resin is at the Pleasant Valley Ski Resort. He makes the observation that you can't stab people without buying something to stab people with. Wallace is at Berkeley Spring Station. Though he hasn't always been there, he used to be posted at Harper's Ferry. Raider vendor bots can be found at Sutton Station, Sunnytop Station, Pleasant Valley Station, and the RNG Station. Responder vendor bots can be found at Charleston Station, Grafton Station, Lewisburg Station, Morgantown Station, and Welch Station. There's also a random encounter responder vendor bot that walks around. The Watoga vendor bot is at Watoga Station, and the White Spring Station vendor is at, unsurprisingly, the White Spring Station. Okay, so I think that's all the Fallout 76 vendors. I know many of them are lame and don't have an elaborate story associated with them, but for the sake of being thorough, they're included. Because come on, you can't expect me to skip a Protectron named Chad. That's not right. Auto Miners Hornray Industrial made the use of customized mining Protectrons called Auto Miners to streamline their work while only maintaining executive staff on payroll. When the Auto Miners were shown to be a great success, outmining their primary competitors Garahan Mining, it was only a matter of time before all other mining companies made the switch to the auto miner, dooming many blue collar workers. There are six notable auto miners that need to be repaired for the public event load bearing. These are D3B, Deb, DUK3, Duke, H4NK, Hank, J0ULE, Jewel, L4RE, Larry, and J03L, Joel. Bernie. Bernie is a firefighting protectron working for the responders in 2102. He administers the final exam for the fire breathers training course at the Belching Betty Mine. So if you want to be an elite scorched fighter, get on his good side. Blackwater Auto Foreman The Blackwater Auto Foreman replaced the human foreman Mitchell Hibbs at the Blackwater Mine in August 2077. By 2102, some systems in the bot have failed, now welcoming just about anyone into the mine. Boomer Boomer was the Berkeley Springs Police Department's bomb disposal robot. He played a pivotal role in disarming a bomb near Berkeley Springs' highway that was left behind by the Appalachian assassin. Now, however, Boomer is stuck at the Southern Bell Motel, unable to move and left without contact from its precinct. Despite this, that still doesn't stop Boomer from employing the aid of any passerbys to help recover explosive devices. As to why Appalachia has so many undetonated explosives lying about, I've got no idea. I guess the Appalachian Assassin is still at large. Census Taker If you find yourself in the Cranberry Bog, be wary of the Census Taker. If spotted, he will request your help with the Census by invoking Section 5A Subsection 7.2 of the Patriotic Patriots of America True Patriotism Act. He needs help fixing his census count by killing incorrectly tallied creatures. Seems quite American to me. Cheerful Beekeeper Okay. History Lesson So the town of Helvetia was settled by German and Swiss immigrants following the Civil War in 1869. The town was home to many crafty folk including musicians, cheesemakers, stonemasons, doctors, teachers, and the likes. And throughout the years, the town maintained its German and Swiss culture, including holidays. Fastnach Day was one such important holiday. They would burn an effigy of Old Man Winter and have a parade with lots of colors and masks. The town invested in 8 Protectron robots to help with preparation. Let's quickly go over what these Protectrons do during the day. The cheerful beekeeper requests the aid of the Vault Dweller to help exterminate the honey beasts that are attacking the honey house. The convivial historian wants 10 porcelain beer steins for study. The gleeful butcher needs the intestines from small animals. The happy candle maker needs beeswax from the honey house's hives. The jolly baker needs rad toad eggs. The joyous musician just wants someone to jam with. The jubilant decorator needs help decorating the barn. And the merry woodsman needs wood for his bonfire. Wowee, okay, done with fast snack day. Insult Bot Sponsored by Robco Industries themselves, the robotics club at Watoga High School made the Insult Bot for a social experiment. 
The purpose of the bot was to observe a target, formulate a custom insult based on them, and then deliver the insult. The bot then gathers any emotional reaction data and stores it for future study. Some insults that the Vault Dweller can experience are 1. I heard you Vault Dwellers were trying to save Appalachia. One more bomb should do it. Right on top of Vault 76. 2. Knock knock. Who's there? An organic being with a finite lifespan. 3. One of us is slow, friendless, and completely devoid of personality. The other is a Protectron. 4. The smartest thing about you is that pit boy on your arm. The dumbest thing is that you mainly use it as a nightlight. After being insulted, the bot hands the Vault Dweller a card that says you have been insulted by insult bot, and then walks away muttering, boom roasted, rest in peace, or contacting burn word for assistance. Not very nice that insult bot. Mr. Fluffy Miguel Caldera was a former programmer working for Vault Tech before the Great War. After the war, his fear of the Scorch Beast caused him to join the responders. With the group, he developed programs for robots and automated kiosks to make the lives of the responders a little bit easier. One of his first major projects was assembling his own bodyguard and assistant out of miscellaneous Protectron parts. Mr. Fluffy was this Protectron. Together, the two would teach people how to survive in their new wasteland. Mr. Fluffy was a normal Protectron helper, except for one thing. Mr. Fluffy had a bit of an attitude problem. You see, Mr. Fluffy hated the name that Miguel gave him, arguing that metallic parts are not fluffy. His standoffish personality was thought to be a bug by Miguel. However, before he could implement a change to Mr. Fluffy's programming, Miguel had passed away. Due to Miguel's last orders to Fluffy being to guard the campsite and Mr. Fluffy's programming not allowing him to deviate from his master's orders, the Protectron has been unable to leave the site of his dead master. And although the bot is still a bit of a jerk, it would seem that he did care for Miguel, and enjoyed the time he spent helping responder volunteers set up camps. Mr. Fluffy realized that the thing he once hated, Miguel and volunteering, was better than the world he's now living in. Professor Bot Professor Bot was Vault University's robot assistant. He was designed to aid the human faculty, but after the bombs dropped and the vaults were activated, Professor Bot inherited the university for himself, where he now presides as the dean. Due to his programming, he's mandated to produce graduates, but unlucky for him, there haven't been any students since the Great War. No students, no classes, no graduates. His strict rule adhering ways poses a problem for the Vault 76 Overseer and the Vault Dweller when trying to gain access to the university's restricted wing to learn more about Vault 79. Professor Bot denies the Overseer access to the restricted wing, but will allow the Vault Dweller access if they complete one teeny tiny task. They must graduate from Vault Tech University. And that's the story of how the Vault Dweller got a university degree. Robert. We're back to the White Spring Resort, but don't worry, it's not a vendor. Robert acts as the maitre d' of the White Spring Resort's dining room. Serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner, depending on the time of course, Robert will gladly ask you to grab a seat and tell you that someone will be with you shortly. And last on the list are the three supervising protectrons at Vault Tech Agricultural Research Center. Chattingham, Danforth, and Wellington are each responsible for the Mr. Farmhands that work on the site. They're responsible for the farmhands' safety as well. As such, they shoot on site. And there we have it, all notable, though some more notable than others, Protectrons throughout the entire Fallout series, thus far. Okay, so now that you've heard every notable Protectron, do you have a favorite? Let me know in the comments. Anywho, have a good rest of your day. Cheers. Yeah, plum loco, partner.